I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, King Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Let's pray. Sovereign Lord, Heavenly Father, the Creator of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for your agape love. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. By your stripes we are healed. We thank you for your precious blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We receive abundant life. We receive forgiveness of sins. Precious Holy Spirit, we thank you, our helper, our comfort, a very present help in the time of trouble. Touch my tongue of clay, turn it into a flame of fire, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, release your angels to minister with us and unto us, in the mighty name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of King Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray, Amen. God bless you. Let's turn our Bibles to First Samuel chapter number 17 verse 45 from the NIRV David said to Goliath you are coming to fight against me with a sword a spear and a javelin but I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He is the God of the armies of Israel. He is the one you have dared to fight against. First Samuel chapter number 17, verse number 47 from the NIRV. The Lord doesn't rescue people by using a sword or a spear. And everyone here will know it. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will hand all of you over to us. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12 to 13 from the New King James Version. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. May God bless the reading of his word. The battle belongs to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, David was a fighter where we are reading. He was a fighter according to 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse number 36. He said, I killed both the lion and the bear. Paul also who wrote the epistle to the Ephesians was a fighter according to 1 Corinthians Chapter number 52, 15, verse number 32, I beg your pardon, where he said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. And he also says in 2 Timothy, chapter number 4, verse number 7, I fought a good fight of faith. Warfare is a reality both to the saint and the sinner. I quote from Bishop David Oyedeko. Stop crying. Ladies and gentlemen, life is a battlefield. I see you and me overcoming barriers. And I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what you're going through. This year, 2020, there's coronavirus, recession, there's loss in every uh, dimension of life. The word of God reminds us in 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 4. That whatever is born of God overcomes the world. 
the battle belongs to the Lord. Where we read, we read um, a scenario where this young man, David, has been sent by his father, Jesse, to bring food and to assess what's happening on the battlefield. So he brought food. And when he brought food, something happened. A giant of God by the name of Goliath appeared from nowhere and he started to curse um, the armies of Israel and the God of Israel. And he put a demand on the table. He says, bring a man to fight me. If that man defeats me, then us, the Philistines, are going to be your slaves. But if I defeat you, you are going to be our slaves. And people ran away the moment this uh, giant Goliath showed up on the, on the scene. But I want to thank God for David. Because this time David appears as a servant to save his brothers. This time David appears and is already anointed. We understand that in the previous scriptures, David has been anointed by the prophet Saul. And you need to understand that David is a type of Christ. David is here as a shepherd. David is here as a king. David is here as a prophet. David is here as a priest. He is a type of Christ. We understand that David says in Psalm chapter number 23, The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus Christ says, confirming what David has written, he says in the gospel of John, I am the good shepherd. And now we see that David is standing on the scene, representing his people, fighting a battle not only to liberate himself, but also to liberate the children of Israel. And then when he appears on the scene, he ask, he's asking some questions. He's investigating and he says, what is going to be given to the man who deals with this problem that is a reason? And for 40 days, the armies of Israel, including Saul, King Saul, they were running away from this giant who was defying the armies of Israel and was also defying and challenging God Jehovah. And David said, enough is enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage someone today that there comes a time when the going gets tough, that the tough gets going. There comes a time in life that when Goliath shows up on the scene, the David generation must stand up. And I can see David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And the, day, the same David says, Blessed be the Lord my God, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. And you know, when the brothers overheard the conversation from David, they despised him. He had three brothers who had been in the jungle, on the war front, in the battlefield for 40 days, but doing nothing. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord has sent me with a message that this is a time for a David generation to stand up on the scene in Africa, in Australia, in Asia, in Europe, in North America, in South America. Enough is enough. There comes a moment, there comes a time where we need to confront the devil head on and speak. What I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, number one, as a child of God, don't be afraid. Take your stand, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12, stand. The word of God says to Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I want to remind someone that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but might in God in the pulling down of strongholds. I want to challenge you, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, take your 
stand. Don't be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the devil comes like a rolling lion. He is not a lion. He is imitating a lion. Seeking he who he may devour. But the word of God gives us an answer in Daniel chapter number 11 verse number 32. And the word of God says, the word of God says, those who know their God, those who have got the knowledge about God, those who have got a relationship with God, those who are connected to Jesus shall be strong, shall stand and perform and do great exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the time for the church to stand up for Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. I see you taking your stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't be afraid of coronavirus. Don't be afraid of 2020. Don't be afraid of the effects of coronavirus and COVID-19. Don't be afraid of sickness and disease and infirmity. Don't be afraid of demons. Don't be afraid of Goliath. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter that he is a giant. The bigger the giant, the easier the target. In the name of Jesus Christ, don't be afraid. David was not intimidated. And one interesting thing, uh, they started to talk to David. Uh, they started to discourage him. Uh, and they said, you know, David, this man has been a fighter for the rest of his life. Uh, but we don't see where Goliath has won a battle. He's just speaking empty words. Uh, he's just threatening the children of Israel. Maybe you are them and the devil who uh, has been speaking negative words, uh, has been speaking fear and confusion uh, in your life. Uh, take your stand don't be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is greatness in you. Greater is he that is in you than the one who is in the world. Take your stand. David was different because he was anointed. He was a different species. He was anointed. I see the grace of God upon your life. I see you standing up, confronting, challenging, dealing with the enemy of your family, the enemy in your marriage, the enemy in the church in the name of Jesus. The enemy in your finances. The enemy in your business. In the name of Jesus. Take your stand. Don't be afraid. They say fear kills more than death itself. Because the moment you are afraid, you cannot think properly. You don't know what to do when you are afraid. You are all over the place. So what the devil does is to bring fear in your life. But let me tell you something. This was a different day. And David was taking his time. He said, I can do it. Like Paul says, he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through the anointing of Christ through the anointing of the Holy Ghost who gives me strength. That's why the word of God says in Zechariah chapter number 4, verse number 5 to 6, this mountain shall be moved. However, it's not by might, nor by power, but it is by the Spirit of God. Let me tell you something. We have got the Spirit of God with us. We have got the Holy Ghost, our guide, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus. You are unconquerable. You are undefeated we are undefeatable in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said in the gospel of Matthew I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church in the name of Jesus. This is a time for the church. The church is you and me. The church is not a building. Take your time. I love David. He is not in a hurry. He is making some inquiries about his trophy. What he is going to get about the benefits of destroying her the enemy of God and he says what can is what is going to be given to this man who destroyed this child in the name of Jesus the, the destruction of this child gives us uh, abundant life the Zoe life the God kind of life you know what we are not just surviving in this world we are born for a purpose you and me are born to live a mark to live a legacy like David in the name of Jesus Christ it doesn't matter that you have been a shepherd and you have been working behind the scenes this is your time to arise and shine for your light has come in the name 
name of Jesus Christ, do not be afraid. Oh, take your stand in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil is a liar in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil is a thief. He is a, he is a thief. He is a liar. He comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says in John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I see you winning in the name of Jesus. I see you winning in your marriage, in your finances, in your family, in your career, at your workplace. I see you winning in your business, in your prayer life, in your worship life. I see you winning on social media, winning souls for Jesus Christ, changing communities, making disciples, shining for Jesus Christ. That's who you are in the name of Jesus Christ, of nothing by the power of the Holy Ghost. We serve a miracle working God. And then David was having a conversation with Saul and Saul gave him an armory. And you know his armor. How come Saul you are giving David your armor but why are you not using your own armor since you have got the armor? Why don't you confront the giant? This is the time for the church to stand up for the creation has been grounding waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. This is our time ladies and gentlemen. This is the time for the prophets to stand up. This is the time for the apostles to stand up in the name of Jesus. This is the time for the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the priests, the archbishops, the bishops, the elders, the deacons, the senior deaconesses and the deaconess. This is the time for the church, for the saints to stand up. The saints of God shall say, take the kingdom in the name of Jesus. I see us taking the kingdom, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God in the name of Jesus. This is the time to enforce the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto our God in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he took the armor of, of, of Saul, he said I've never used this and it's too big, it's too heavy for me. I'm just a young man. I can take this on. And when he said, allow me now to fight this giant. Let me tell you something at times when we want to stand up, we have got the three brothers. We have got brothers who want to encourage, discourage us. We also have the soul who want to give us the things that does, does not work even for them. It's high time that you take your stand in the work of God in the name of Jesus. And then David says, I'll use what I'm used to be using. He had his staff, he had his sling, and he picked up five stones. These five stones, number five represents grace, the grace of God. So when he picked the five stones, he was saying the grace of God is sufficient for me. He says, I have got grace. His grace is enough for me. I have got the grace of God to deal with this champion of God. I'm going to cut his head. I'm going to put him down. And when Goliath saw David, he says, I do you am I a dog? You come to me with sticks because he was expecting someone of his own stature. But let me tell you something. It's not by might, nor by power, but it is by the Spirit of God. And Paul says, we have got this treasure in earthen vessels so that the glory can be of God and not of us. And David stood and Goliath started to speak nonsense. He started to defy the name of God. And David started to speak the word of God. Whatever challenge you are going through, it doesn't matter whatever challenge you are going through. Number two, speak the word of God over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to speak the word of God over your life. Even when Jesus was tempted, he overcame the devil by the word of God. He spoke the accurate word of God. You know, at times the devil can quote scripture and misquote scripture when he wants to use it, where it is not appropriate. But now Jesus, the word of God, he spoke the word of God after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And we see that David is a picture of Christ. He is dealing with the devil head on. This is a time for us to deal with the devil head on. The devil of fear head on in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak the word of God over your life uh, concerning your health, uh, concerning your children, concerning your marriage, uh, concerning your finances, uh, concerning your condition, uh, concerning your business. Uh, speak
speak the word of God. If you are sick in your body, say, by his stripes I am healed. If you are weak, say, I am strong. Because the word of God says, let the weak say, I am strong. Strong in the name of Jesus. If you are tired, say, I say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are afraid, say, I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flyeth by day. You are speaking the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. Speak the word of God over your finances. Speak the word of God over your finances. The word of God says, My God shall. Shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Just speaking the word of God. If there are any demons disturbing you, cast them out. For we have authority and power to cast out demons. If you are there and you are not feeling well in your body, be healed. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that migraine headache to stop and disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right now. I command that backache to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. I command arthritis to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every growth, any type of growth in your life to disappear on your body, from your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command lung cancer to disappear right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I command uh, in this time cancer, any form of cancer in your body, colon cancer in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I say be healed from any form of cancer uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. If your ear you cannot hear, I command your ear to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are blind, I command every blind eye to to open them in the name of Jesus. I command the dumb to speak in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the deaf to hear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command the blind to see in the name of Jesus Christ. Witches and wizards shall not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Misfortune is not your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive shalom, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is your portion right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear is not your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, depression is not your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Never commit suicide. Don't commit suicide. Jesus loves you. God loves you. He knows you by name. He has never left you. He will never forsake you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Speak the word of God over your life. I'm speaking the word of God over your church right now. Let there be life and light in your church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be life and light. In the name of Jesus Christ. In your marriage. In your finances. In every dimension. In every facet of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I see now David. He's speaking the word of God to Goliath. He said, you know what? Today is a different day. Because the battle now belongs to the Lord. Since you have taken it to another level uh, to insult God. This battle belongs to God. Uh, let me tell you something. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we are the children of God. Uh, we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar person. Have you not read about Paul of Saul of Tarsus uh, when he was causing havoc uh, in the body of Christ uh, and on his way to Damascus. Uh, he had a Damascus road experience uh, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me and he said who are you lord so whoever is fighting you is fighting god the battle belongs to the lord in the name of jesus christ number three act on god's word david is not a man who is not just speaking the word of god there are some people who only speak and do not act on the word of god david he spoke the word of god and he took his sling and he started to use it he acted on the word of god and there he was and the spirit of god died directed the stone into the forehead there and um, for he fell on his forehead Goliath was pushed by something he fell on his forehead and David ran and cut the head 
of this man, this giant, he took the head. Let me tell you something. And there was celebration. He did not win just for himself. He won for everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love David. He's a picture of Christ. He is not just winning for himself. He is winning for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus Christ, when he said it is finished, he said it is finished for you and me. We, that's why we are called more than conquerors. Because when Jesus Christ was on the cross, we were in him. And when he won, we also won with him. When he died, we died with him. When he was buried, we were buried with him. When he rose from the dead, we rose from the dead with him. When he seated, we are seated with him in heaven places far above principalities and powers. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, to act on God's word. It's not a time just to speak the word of God. It's not the time just to recite scripture and the sick are dying. It's a time to recite scripture and then act on the word of God. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you are suffering from coronavirus, I say be healed right now in the name of Jesus. It's our time as a church to say enough is enough with this COVID-19 and coronavirus. Let's act on the word of God right now and make a declaration and say enough is enough. Enough is enough from this coronavirus. I command coronavirus to stop, to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Maybe coronavirus is the giant of our time. The giant of, of David's time was Goliath. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you see what's happening here? Goliath was tailor made for David because they never fought anyone. He only fought against David and David prevailed. He cut his head. Today, I see us cutting the head of coronavirus, cutting the head of cancer and lack and poverty in the name of Jesus Christ and taking it. He took it to Jerusalem and it was symbolic because where he took the head of Goliath, it is called the place of the skull. And this is where Jesus won the battle because it says that the feet, the foot of the seed of the woman who crushed the serpent. And when Jesus was on the cross, his feet was on top of the head of the serpent, which was actually symbolic of the head of Goliath. Let me tell you something. We are more than conquerors. The, the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. When we fight, uh, the weapons we fight with are not carnal, but might in God. I see you winning uh, in your health, uh, in the name of Jesus. I see you winning uh, in your finances, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I see you winning uh, in your marriage, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. You, you might say, oh, Pastor Sam, you don't know what I've gone through. That's why David did a testimony. You and me, uh, we have a testimony because David David says, you know, your servant, your servant fought a bee and a lion. He killed a bee and a lion. Some of you, I want to remind you, the divorce you went through, you could have lost your mind, you could have committed suicide, but here you are, you are still alive. The grace of God sustained you. You have a testimony. Maybe you are in diaspora. The way you crossed into where you are right now and the way God raised you. There was a time you didn't have clean water. Now you have got clean water everywhere. There was a time you could not afford a loaf of bread. Now we have got different types of bread and tea. There was a time you could only have tea only during Christmas. But here you are. God kept you. You God, the same God who has been performing miracles, who is performing miracles. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of God says they overcame the enemy by the word of their testimony. Can you see what David is doing? He is using the word of his testimony that he killed a bear and a lion. He can deal with this uncircumcised Philistine who is challenging God in the name of Jesus. No one who challenges the grace of God can win. No one who challenges God who fights God can win. That's why at one time Galam Gamaliel says, you know what? Leave these gentlemen. Leave these apostles alone because you might find yourself fighting against God because you fight. If you fight God, you cannot win. Anyone who is fighting the church is fighting God. You can ask the soul of Tarsus who repented. I want to thank God for the life of soul. He repented and he became one of the greatest apostles who has ever lived and he wrote a 
lot of letters. We celebrate the grace of God upon his life. And you and me, we are more than conquerors. I see us winning because this battle belongs to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are there, you want to win. You are a winner. Do you want to win? You can only win if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the time to sleep awake from your slumber. The reason why we sweat here on social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you call it, preaching the word of God. We are called by God. We are called by God to, to win souls. I want to encourage you, if you are there, to get yourself connected to Jesus Christ. Christ. Because when you are connected, you will be winning like David. David was different because he was anointed. He was a different species because he was anointed. That's why this battle was now below. Be now it belonged to God because he was connected to God. I want to encourage you to get yourself connected to God. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Wonderful Counselor. You will turn around. When you receive Jesus Christ, there's something that takes place in your life. You are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You are translated from the kingdom of devil, the Satan, the old serpent, to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, King Jesus Christ, who redeemed us by his own precious blood and made us kings and priests unto our God. So if you are there, you are not born again, you don't have peace of mind, you have everything, you have got money, but you need Jesus. You are successful, but you need Jesus. My friend, maybe this is the last time you are going to hear the word of God. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The moment you get yourself connected to Jesus, then the battle you fight, you are no longer fighting the battle on your own. The battle now has been taken to another level. It belongs to the Lord, the God of all, the Lord of hosts, the God who answers by fire, consuming fire. His name is Jehovah. Receive Jesus Christ. Repent. Turn away from your sins in the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I repent of all my sins. I turn away from my wicked ways. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe with my heart that God raised you from the dead. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood and make me whole. Precious Holy Spirit, come into my life. Guide me, my guider, in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, from today, I reject you. I belong to Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I am a winner. From now onwards, the battle belongs to the Lord. I am born again. I am a child of God. Thank you so much. If you have prayed that prayer, God bless you. You are a winner. The same way the children of Israel won with David. When Jesus Christ won on the cross, you also won with him, just like what David did on behalf of the children of Israel. So number one, ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid. Take your stand in the Lord. Never give up. Don't run away. Number two, speak the word of God over your life. Number three, act on God's word. And the last one, the battle belongs to the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore in the mighty name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. you.